Welcome to Passages from the Heart. In today's episode, I walk you through some simple steps in how you can fold your mainsail right on the boom after you get back in from a sail. I'll also share with you some of the projects that I'll be working on this fall and winter aboard SV Sunflower and SV Nomas. And last but not least, I'll also share with you some of the things you can do to chase away those winter blues when you're not able to get out on the water. When we come in from a sail, I basically just take the sail down and tie it off. Now I'm going to take some time to actually try to fold it while it's on the boom, obviously. Before I start folding the sail on the boom, I've got to remove all these sail ties first. The slugs are in the mass, so I'm going to use the tension to try to get these folds to kind of naturally fall into place. Being careful with the battens too, so that you kind of try to keep those from getting wonky while you're folding things. So we'll come up here and just kind of one, two, three, four. Looks like I got about five folds basically up in this part of it. What I'll do next is grab a sail tie and try to gather these folds as neatly as I can. Kind of shift them up on top like that and then because I want the tie to be on the top side I take the sail tie and I go over first catch the end on there catch the end on this side and bring it tight like that but I'm going to slide this up a little bit I think and then I'm going to just use a square knot to tie this off And then the same thing, I'm just going to keep pulling back. Shift this all on top. And get another sail tie. I might actually put this one right about here. I continue working my way aft towards the end of the boom. I generally use a total of four sail ties to complete the job. In the remaining clip you see here, I add those final two. We've got SV Sunflower all nestled in here at the homestead. I haven't covered her up yet, but I will be. I need to work on her bottom. You can see it's really gross. Moving along to the starboard side, you can see, yeah, it's pretty, pretty icky. Yeah, so she's home. I may try to knock out the teak. I've got a couple warmer days coming up. To prevent the wasps or mud daubers, I've got this paper towel, just like how I did with no mass over there, if you can see her, um, with her sliding hatch for the companion way i put this stuff this paper towels underneath here to try to keep the insects out speaking of no moss she is as i mentioned just around the corner here and you can see i still have my tape up if you've watched other episodes that i have done where i mentioned doing this uh, painter's tape to prevent the sandpaper from scratching the fiberglass so i still have to do as you can see you can compare i did the the grab rail or handrail here but i still have to do this long strip here and then i have to do that on the other side as well i bought a, a non-toxic metal polish that i'm really excited to try out and hopefully it'll do the number to get this nice and shiny again because it's pretty looking pretty sad so yeah so there's ms no moss she's still sitting and waiting to get splashed next season hopefully we can get that all ironed out since I didn't have much luck with finding some help earlier this year to get that taken care of. Welcome to a late October fall day. I am here with SV Sunflower Sunny and I'm just taking a look at her on the hard here to see how I can rig a jib downhaul for next season. I'm trying to do this project without having to drill holes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a block to attach to the bale. From there, I think what I'll do is get 
two more blocks one to put on this part of the bow pulpit and use a non-slip sort of pad underneath a stainless steel clamp to attach it as far as attaching to the bale i'll probably tie it to the bale i've been learning a bunch of different knots so i'm sure there's a knot that'll accommodate and i think i'll take another one back to here another stainless steel clamp with the rubber non-slip grip underneath so it won't scar up the the bow pulpit with another block and then run it back behind the side stay or the shroud and just p.s by the way i'm really bummed out i just noticed i should have covered protected these stays when we were traveling with the boat back from the marina because now look it's it's scuffed up the hull here or not the hull but the cabin top but I think I can probably use some sort of compounding product to get that out. So running the, the downhaul line up from the bale to the bow pulpit back between the cabin top and the side stay and bringing the line back. And here's where I kind of run into a little bit of a dilemma because I don't want to drill. What I'm thinking I can do is come back here with another stainless steel clamp with the rubber non-slip grip underneath it to protect the stainless. This is the non-slip grip that I thought I could use to put underneath the stainless steel clamps when I install them on the bow pulpit and on the stern pulpit. And then I can cleat off onto here. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if that will work. If you have any ideas, give me a shout out and let me know what you think. Some other winter projects I'm gonna to try to tackle are gonna be the cushions on board Nomas. I'm gonna to try to get those taken off and well, first vacuum them and then take them off and, and get them cleaned. Oh yeah, the other thing I'm gonna do is send in Sunny's mainsail up to Sail Crafters in Minneapolis and have them put in a second set of reef points so what is a sailor to do when she doesn't have a boat to sail anymore because it's too cold outside? Well, whether it's too cold is to be debatable. I don't really mind the cold, but when the water is frozen, that's another story. <laughs> Unless you have an ice boat, of course, which I don't, but I've got this boat here and I've got that boat right there. So since I don't have an ice boat, what I'll do is try to figure out what kind of sail this is in the sail bag. Is it a drifter? Is it a spinnaker? Stay tuned and I'll let you know what I find out. Well, one of my goals this winter is to increase my knowledge of nautical knots as well. So I'll check out this book in more detail and see what I can learn. If you're craving some salty sailing stories this winter, check out some of my top picks. These are some books that I got from my dad's sailing library. I think the authors sailed in the late 70s across the Atlantic. This is a book that I read about a woman um, who's originally from New Zealand, who, as you can see by the title, single-handed around the world. And she did this um, pretty much within less than a year of learning how to sail, which is pretty remarkable. Here's another book that I highly recommend, the Mahina Tiar. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, this guy, John Neal, I heard him on a podcast, a sailing podcast, um, Live Aboard Sailing Podcast, actually, is where I heard him. And I found out about um, his book, Log of the Mahina, first, which I still haven't been able to find. But I did find this one in my dad's library, so I read that. This is the book that I'm currently reading, Chasing Dreamtime by Neva Soloway. Um, and it's, as you can see, a seagoing hitchhiker's journey through memory and myth. It's really good. This woman left the States at the age of 24 and she bought an old sloop in Hawaii and then later decided to, instead of sailing her own boat, she sold it and just started hitchhiking her way across the world on other people's sailboats. So this kind of documents her journey. And then this book here, I finished reading before the one I just showed you. And this one is awesome too. I really highly recommend this. She is um, Captain Liz Clark, who I believe in her early 20s as well, bought a Cal 40 and set sail from San the San Diego area, I believe, and made her way down the coast of Mexico. And I believe she stopped in the Galapagos as well and ended up in French Polynesia, which I believe to this day she still is in French Polynesia almost 20 years later because I think she left in 2005. 
if memory serves me. So that's another good read. Drop me a line, let me know what projects you're working on. I always love to hear what other people are doing on their boats. I think most of us, at least in this area or neck of the woods, are gonna be hunkering down for the fall and winter season. But to those of you who get to sail year round, I'm jealous. I wish I lived someplace where I could do that. Uh, maybe one day. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh.